YouTube! We are coming to the end of March now, which means it's time for me to film yet another Curtain Up video, which is my series of videos talking about the theatre that I've been to see in the month. I'm really pleased this month because all of the stuff I've been to see is actually completely new to me. Some shows they've been on for ages, some shows have been on before and on tour and things like that, but they're just shows that I haven't seen before, so it's all new stuff for me to talk about, which I find really exciting. The first show that I saw this month was Funny Girl at the Minia Chocolate Factory. We had booked these tickets ages ago, I think like the minute they went on sale sometime last year. I don't normally book tickets that far in advance so I was so excited to see the show. I would not seen the film before this and I thought well I know I'm going to see it on stage so I might just hold off on watching the film until after I've seen it. I was also really excited to see Sheridan Smith in the title role of Fanny Bryce. Unfortunately, a couple of hours before the show, she tweeted that she wouldn't be going on that night um, due to personal issues. I am not going to begrudge someone for going off on a show if their mental or physical health is affected, and I'm always happy to see understudies, so I was just thrilled to be seeing the show, really. Natasha J. Barnes was Sheridan's understudy, and I absolutely loved seeing her in the role. I thought she was absolutely fantastic. The whole show, I thought thoroughly enjoyed. It's transferring to the Savoy in April so I'm going to try and get tickets to see it then as well to see how they transfer it from a small space at the Menia to a big West End stage but that's what I love as well, seeing something in a small space and then knowing that it's going to transfer to a much bigger space so you can almost feel like you're seeing it in its original home. The Menia Chocolate Factory is a great theatre for that, I mean The Colour Purple is on Broadway at the moment and that was first at the Menia Chocolate Factory so it's a good venue to keep your eye out on. I can't wait to see how some of the bits of choreography translate onto a big stage. Um, I feel like at the Menia they were a bit cramped with that and that the numbers can be so much more glamorous um, on a bigger stage so it's always exciting knowing that there's so much more they can do with it. In all I just thought it was really classy, I loved the music, I thought it was great, I love, I love shows from that sort of era and that's style um, so I really yeah just had a really great night. At the start of the month I received a message asking if I'd be able to film a concert and that was made in London at the Cockpit Theatre. This concert series has been created by Tori Allen Martin who is a wonderful human being and basically she has made these concerts so that people who are creating theatre at the moment have a chance to have their their pieces whether they be plays or musicals or just just songs or they're waiting for a playwright or something like that to be heard. It was really great to hear new writing and stuff that's just been at recent fringe venues or is still in development and things like that and I think it's a great platform for people that are struggling to get their work heard to just have a little push and just just get out there basically. So if you are currently creating a play, a musical, just writing songs, anything, give her an email and see what can happen. You've got nothing to lose. The next show that I went to see was Hand to God at the Vaudeville Theatre. I actually won these tickets from a competition that the lovely team at the Theatre Cafe were running so thank you very much for the tickets guys. I took my best friend Lee to see this and because we both wanted to see it so it was great that I won these tickets and we could go. We hadn't really heard a lot about the storyline of this show, we just knew that it was quite funny, um, a bit tongue in cheek, kind of like Book of Mormon, Avenue Q, that sort of stuff. Um, we like, Lee loves the Book of Mormon, I've only seen it a few times in comparison to her, but um, that sort of comedy we're, we really enjoy. So we kind of went into it knowing that we'd enjoy it, but not really knowing what it was going to be about. When we went into the auditorium, they were playing like country music and things like that, and then that made sense when the show started because it was set in like Southern America. Hand to God, it's transferred from Broadway uh, to the West End. It's a show about sort of a church-like social group that make puppets, and how this one puppet has seemingly being possessed by the devil, which makes it sound like a very bizarre show, and it is. The show is so outrageous and funny, I was crying with laughter at some points, that you really don't see the kind of like, absolutely shocking but really important ending that it has. I thought it was fantastic the way they did that and how it's structured, it's just really well done. You go through such a range of emotions, you're like, shocked and laughing and crying at some points from laughter and shock and then suddenly just like wow I wasn't expecting that sort of impact from a show like this. I was particularly impressed with Harry Melling. I've only known about Harry through Dudley Dursley and Harry Potter so to see him on the stage acting not only as one character but the puppet as well it was just fascinating to watch and it's so it's very impressive when someone's 
having a puppet as well for you to forget that they are voicing the puppet because the way he was reacting to Tyrone and and oh gosh the interactions were just incredible to watch and you don't realize how fantastic an actor he is from the Harry Potter series like he is incredible so I definitely go along and see it if like that sort of dark comedy is your thing because I think you will definitely enjoy it. Sticking with the puppet theme, the weekend after seeing Hand to God I went to see Avenue Q as it was at the New Wimbledon Theatre which is my local theatre. Weirdly enough I've never seen Avenue Q even though I knew like before that it would be a show that I would really really love. I've seen them performing at the Olivier Awards in Covent Garden's Piazza so I knew a couple of the songs and you hear a couple of songs here and there but hadn't ever seen the full show. My friend Lauren and I went last minute to get tickets at the New Wimbledon and we ended up with amazing mid-stalls seats. It was just perfect view. And it was quite funny as well because my friend Sam, who used to be in the show playing Princeton and Rod, was at the show as well and sat right next to us. So it was quite fun to be sat next to him and watching the show and because obviously like he was tapping along to the music at certain points and it was just really nice to get his input on the show as well. And I think it says a lot when actors who have done a show so much still want to go and see it afterwards. I absolutely loved the show. I think it's got such a big heart and it's just hilarious. We were saying afterwards that we want to try and see it at another one of the tour venues. I can't remember when it's touring until. I think it's still got quite a while but obviously as usual all the links to the shows and things will be in the description box below for you to check out. So Avenue Q I absolutely loved and it was a very puppet themed week. <laughs> This is slightly theatre related so I wanted to mention it but I had the pleasure of filming a flash mob proposal outside the Lyceum Theatre the other weekend and it was just such a lovely like moment, the, the dance went really well, she said yes, it was a great success and I'm really happy with how the video turned out so I really appreciate you watching it, I will link it up here and down below as well for you to check out and just give it some love. <laughs> The next show that I went to see was Guys and Dolls at the Phoenix Theatre. I missed out on seeing this at the Savoy, so thankfully as it's transferred to the Phoenix, I was able to see it. This is another show that I've not really heard any of the music from, didn't really know the storyline. I think the only song that I knew was um, Sit Down You're Rocking the Boat, and that was from like when I watched Glee years ago. For some reason, before seeing this show, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, and I don't normally go into shows thinking that. Thankfully, I really enjoyed it. The music and choreography and just kind of the general style of it really reminded me of Singing in the Rain and that's one of my favourite musicals and I suppose they're from the same sort of like era so it's a win really. I just thought it was a really like nice show to go and see. I thought some of the choreography was amazing. That's definitely what reminded me of Singing in the Rain the most. I think the choreography, like the opening number, it just felt really really similar in a good way, not in like a copyright way. And I suppose it was just kind of like bringing back those happy memories of seeing that show as well. I'd describe it as maybe one of those like easier shows to see because you just go and enjoy it and just just watch it and it's not too not too heavy dramatic but in a good way. I It was just really really nice and I really want to see the tour as well because um, I love Louise Dearman so I want to see her in the role of Miss Adelaide because now that I've seen it I can just imagine how hilarious she is in it. After seeing Guys and Dolls I headed over to the National Theatre as I had tickets to see Les Blanc. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong but we had tickets to see that thanks to the lovely team at Masterclass who were giving away tickets. Now I've mentioned this before but I'm not really a massive play person. I think I need a good show tune. I know that's really bad and I'm trying to enjoy plays more but I think I just prefer like the comedy plays where it's not too heavy, it's not too dark and this play was quite dark. <laughs> As it was the first preview of the show they had a couple of technical hitches and then that meant the show was cancelled after the interval so I'm not going to talk about it in full in this video because hopefully I'll be seeing it again next month so then I can actually talk about the show as a whole um, but obviously it's in previews like stuff happens in previews, things go wrong, things don't work so it's totally understandable and bless the performers 
did as well as they could considering the technical difficulties. And finally, the last show that I saw this month was Miss Atomic Bomb at the St. James Theatre. This one was a bit of a last minute decision. Um, today Tix were doing an Easter egg hunt on their app, so I managed to get a ridiculous discount on this ticket. I mean, I wanted to see the show anyway, but when I can save money, I will save money. So I ended up only paying £4.50 to see this show, which is just insane. <laughs> this show is completely new, so I wasn't really sure like what to expect from it, but it has an incredible cast. It's got Simon Lipkin, it's got Dean John Wilson, Catherine Tate, Florence Andrews who I've seen in, in Wicked before, it's got Daniel Boys in it. There's so many names so I mean it's gotta be a winner right? So just to give you a little insight on what the show is about, it's set uh, in the 50s I think it was um, when they were testing the atomic bomb and how um, in Vegas they were using the, the atom bomb as like a selling point basically and there's this hotel that's on the, the brink of closing, there's a crazy guy with a gun and he just wants to shoot everyone basically. They need to find a gimmick to keep the hotel afloat. It's a very bizarre show but I think that's what I love about it. It kind of reminded me of Urinetown and I don't know if that's because it's in the same theatre, in the St James Theatre, um, which again is a theatre I absolutely love because they bring stuff like this to London's theatre scene. It was just very quirky and very funny and I didn't know Catherine Tate could sing like that. Oh my goodness, she's incredible and so funny. I like that they included some of her like sketches like into the show in a sly way. Um, and it was just, yeah, she was brilliant. I've only seen Florence Andrews in the ensemble of Wicked before. I, I think she covered, I wanna say she covered Nessa and Glinda maybe, um, but obviously being in the ensemble you don't get to hear singular voices that much but her voice in this show is so incredible it's absolutely phenomenal she really gets the chance to shine and i really love that another thing i love about the saint james and how they change for the shows is how they use the space um a lot of shows that i've seen make the stage feel quite small whereas for this show it was like really grand and, and amazing and i loved how they used the set and like there's a screen at the back that they really utilize to change the locations and it was just very cleverly done and it's nice to see something new getting a chance to shine in london it's amazing so i would thoroughly recommend that you check that out at the st james theater i can't remember off the top of my head when it's running until but everything will be in the description bar so you can check it out so that's everything that i went to see in march I really hope you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more from me. As always, do let me know what you've been to see recently in the comments or what you're looking forward to see and I will see you in my next video. Bye! <laughs>